Thank you so much for checking out another project video. My name is Mitch and this is Made by Mitch. And today I'm going to show you how I made this really awesome desk lamp. I used a method called the Japanese Shoshugiban method to finish it um, and give it this blackened look. So let's check it out. Let me show you how I did it. So the first thing I had to do was measure all the boards to size. So Let's try that again. So the first thing I had to do was I measured all the boards and marked them and then I took them over to the miter saw to cut them to size. I didn't really have a plan going into this and how I was building the lamp, so I just cut them to a rough length until I can lay them out and see what I wanted. After doing that, I used an angle ruler to figure out the angle that I needed to cut these boards at and then I took that angle, put it on the miter saw and then I started cutting the boards to, to match that angle. I built this out one board at a time. Um, I didn't really have a plan going into it, so just trial and error. I had to do a couple things over, uh, but I finally landed on what I wanted it to do. And after I did the bottom angle, then I worked on this top angle, readjusted the miter saw, and then made the cuts for the top part as well. And again, as I'm going here, I'm kind of making stuff up as I go. So I decided to double up the top part to fit the lamp a little bit better. And then I glued this, these top two pieces together and let those dry. So I was working on this, trying to get, figure out how to install the wire and this, the switch and the light bulb and things like that. So I've decided to double up the boards just to allow some room for the wire to run through without it being exposed. So I'll show you what I mean here. This will be cut off right here as soon as I can figure out how long it needs to be. This one is going to be like this. And then the other two, which are already glued up, will be on the top here and the bulb will hang from that. So I will route this. So once I finally got all the boards cut to size and I figured out what I was doing, it was time to create a channel or a rabbit for all of the wiring to run through. I didn't want the wires to be exposed, that's why I doubled up the boards on this lamp. Um, but I'm using a trim router here and I'm just making a quarter inch deep channel on both boards and the inside part of the board so the wiring would run along the inside. Uh, and for this other board, it's going to be the back board, so I'm not going all the way down the board. I'm stopping here at a certain point, and then I would drill a hole so the, the, the plug from the wall would go into that part. I did the same thing for the bottom piece, that would be the base of the lamp, and then I glued these two pieces together. So now that the top part is dry, it's time to prepare it for wiring as well. And the first thing I'm doing here is I'm marking the middle of this top portion. I'm drilling a hole with a Forstner bit for the, the lamp socket to fit into. And once that hole is done, I have to drill another hole that would connect to the side part of the base for the wire to pass through. And then the next thing I did was sand everything with the belt sander just to get everything even and smooth and then I could lay it out and finally get a first look at it at the lamp. And now moving on to the toggle switch that I'm going to be installing. So first I found out where I wanted it to be and then I flipped it over to the bottom and I'm using a larger Forstner bit, I believe it's an inch and a quarter, to make a large hole that this toggle switch would fit down in. Uh, I didn't go all the way through, I went about halfway through, a little more than halfway, and then I finished it out with a half inch Forstner bit so I would, the toggle would stick up through the uh, other side of the lamp and then the, the remaining part would be underneath. And so I had to kind of go back and forth to make sure that this hole was deep enough and then once it was, I could put in the nut on the other side of it. And all along doing these parts, I'm making sure that the wiring can pass throughout the different parts of the lamp. And this particular part here, I had to drill a hole in the back so that way the wire would come in from the wall plug um, through the other parts of the lamp. And then next it was time to move on to the wiring part and I just used a household extension cord. I um, cut the, the end off and then started pulling the wire apart to feed it through the different parts of the lamp. Before I moved on to the next step, I wanted to wire everything up to make sure all the components were working properly and that the wiring would fit inside the channels that I made here on the last step. 
Okay, so we got everything pre-wired and I wanted to plug it in, hit the switch, make sure everything's wired correctly before I move forward and finish it and do all of that. So let's check it out and see if it works. Okay, all is ready to go. So we got the bulb, we got our switch. Okay, so let's plug it in. And hit the switch. It works. It works, so now we just need to make sure all the wiring fits inside the lamp, and then we'll take it all apart, finish the wood part of it, glue it together, and uh, we're done. Cool. Next, I sanded everything all the way up to 220 grit sandpaper, and then I could prepare everything for the shoshugi bonds. You may have not heard of shoshugi bond before, but this is a Japanese method of finishing wood. They would char the outside of the wood in the 18th century, and it would allow them to weatherproof the wood. They, after they would char the outside of the wood, then they would finish it with oil, and it would help protect the wood, preserve the wood, and it would last a lot longer. In my case, I'm not really going for preserving the wood. I just wanted the burnt look that it kind of gives. I really thought it made this pine pop and it was really simple to do. I just kept the torch at a consistent distance away from the wood throughout and then I kept doing this until it burned evenly across all the wood. It was really a simple process and I think anyone could do it. After this it's time for the final assembly. I didn't go over a ton of great detail on the electronics of this but I do have a build article where I'll go into a little more detail if you're interested in that. There'll be a link in the description below. I'll also have build plans available for purchase on my website if you want to make this exact lamp. It'll show you step by step. I may not have it out right away, but keep your eyes open. The link will be in the description when I do have those available. I would say the biggest thing I learned in this part of the lamp was just to make sure that the channels you create for the wiring are large enough to fit the wiring. There's a couple places here that I spliced that I had to go back in and make the channel a little bit bigger because the board didn't fit. After getting everything wired, I used hot glue to get all the wires in place and then I could finally put on the backboard and everything was ready to go. Now my initial plan was to glue these three different parts together, but I found out quickly that glue would not hold and I didn't really have a good way to clamp it. So I decided to use some screws in the different parts to do this. Now if I could do all of this over again, I would have pre-screwed all of this. That way I could use some dowels to cover the screw holes, but I didn't do this. So some of the screws I left exposed, which was okay at the end of it, but I would have done that a little bit different. I did countersink all of these screws so that way they would be a little bit more hidden. But again, if I would do this again, I would have done this beforehand. That way they would not be exposed. The next thing I did was I made a bottom for the lamp. And to do this, I just used a quarter inch plywood and I just marked the size of the base of the lamp and then I cut it out using a jigsaw. After that I just got everything even on the belt sander and then I could screw it onto the, the base lamp. I did the same thing, I just pre-drilled and I screwed holes to get this on to the bottom of the lamp. Now I did the same shushugi bond method for the bottom just so that it matched a little bit better and then I could attach it to the base. And once everything was finally assembled, I could finish it and I used Polycrylic by Minwax. This is my favorite finish for little projects like this. It always turns out really nice. This was definitely a fun project and it was a great learning experience for me, especially with installing the electronics, uh, doing the Shoshugi Bond. There's a lot of cool things in this project. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like this video, you may like some of the other project videos I have on my channel. I'll link those right here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.